Is the Prime Minister proud to be bankrolled by someone using racist and misogynist language when he says the member for Hackney North and Stoke Newington makes you want to hate all black women? Minister, Mr Speaker, the alleged comments were wrong, they were racist, and he has now, as I said, the comments were wrong, they were racist. He has rightly apologised for them, and that remorse and that remorse should be accepted, Mr Speaker. There is no place for racism in Britain, and the government that I lead is living proof of that. Mr Speaker, the man bankrolling the Prime Minister also said that the member for Hackney North should be shot. How low would he have to sink? What racist, woman-hating threat of violence would he have to make before the Prime Minister plucked up the courage to hand back the £10 million that he's taken from him? Mr Speaker, as I said, the gentleman apologised genuinely for his comments, and that remorse should be accepted. But he talks about language. He, he might want to reflect on the double standards of his deputy leader, of his deputy leader calling her opponent scum, Mr. Speaker. His shadow, his shadow, his shadow foreign secretary, the shadow foreign secretary, comparing conservatives to Nazis, Mr. Speaker, and the man that he wanted to make chancellor. The man that he wanted to make Chancellor talking about lynching a female minister. His silence on that speaks volumes. Mr Speaker, the difference is he's scared of his party. I've changed my party. And Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker. I want to hear both the Prime Minister and leave the opposition. Here's one. Two weeks ago, the Prime Minister invited himself into everyone's living room at six o'clock on a Friday evening. No one asked him to give that speech. He chose to do it. He chose to anoint himself as the great healer and pose as some kind of unifier. But when the man bankrolling his election says the member for Hackney North should be shot, he suddenly finds himself tongue-tied, shrinking in sophistry, hoping he can deflect for long enough that we'll all go away. What does the Prime Minister think it was about the hundreds of millions of pounds of NHS contracts given to Frank Hester by his government that first attracted him to giving £10 million to the Tory party in the first place? Mr Speaker, I'm absolutely not going to take any lectures from somebody... From somebody, from somebody who chose to represent an anti-Semitic terrorist group, Hizbut Tahrir, who chose to serve a leader who let anti-Semitism run rife in this Labour Party. Those are his actions, those are his values, and that's how he should be judged. Mr Speaker, the problem is he's describing a Labour Party that no longer exists. I'm describing, I'm describing the man who is bankrolling that up in general election. Um, oh. Keir Starmer. They, they can shout all they like. Two weeks ago, he marched them out like fools to defend Islamophobia, and now the member for Ashfield is warming up the opposition benches for them. And yesterday, yesterday, he sent them out to play down racism and misogyny until he was forced to change course. He won't hand the money back. He won't comment on how convenient it is that a man handed huge NHS contracts by his government is now his party's biggest donor. You have to wonder what the point is of a Prime Minister who can't lead and a party that can't govern. <laughs> 